So in today's lecture, so we will see how we, how the thin films are how thin films are uh, fabricated, right? So thin film nanostructures. So thin films are uh, nanostructures. How the nanostructures are fabricated, right? So the nanostructures are fabricated. So we have seen so many methods of fabrication of the nanomaterials, right? Nanomaterials and nanostructures by using different PVD techniques and CVD techniques, right? Then we have seen some of the characterization of the materials like XRD, SEM, uh, SEM, scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, atomic force microscopy, magnetic force microscopy, scanning probe microscopy, scanning tunneling microscopy. And we have seen certain differences between all those two, all those uh, different types of uh, microscopies also, and there are different types of uh, uh, scan, different types of uh, differences between the different types of scan, uh, different types of characterization techniques, right? So in today's lecture. We we'll see how the film, main film nanostructures are fabricated, right? So basically, let us see what are thin films. So, so we can see a thin film is framed on a bubble on a some surface. A thin film is framed on a water surface, right? So a thin film is a layer of material ranging from less than a nanometer, one billionth of a meter, to several micrometers, to several micrometers thick, right? A thin film is a layer of material ranging from less than a nanometer. So one billionth of a meter to several micrometers. Every day, samples of thin films include soap bubbles, oil silks on water, and anti-reflection coatings on eyeglasses. Right. So where we can see this type of thin film, thin layer, thin layer we can see. Right. That's why a thin layer, a thin film is a layer of material ranging from uh, less than a nanometer, one billionth of a meter to several micrometers thick. So every day, samples of uh, thin films, including soap bubbles, oil silks. On water and anti-reflection coating on eyeglasses. Right. So these are some of the thin films you can see here. We have some surface water where we can see certain colors, certain colors floating on water, which is nothing but a thin film. Oil floats on water. Oil floats on water by creating some thin film. The bubble, the so bubble. So that is a so bubble. There is a thin film. Just if you uh, if you uh, push the bubble, the bubble will uh, uh, break out, and we can see certain um, liquid particles coming out. So you could dodge. Right, and anti-reflection coatings or eyeglasses. Right, so these are some of the thin films. So, in case of uh, material material sciences, so thin film is a solid or liquid object with uh, with one of its dimension very is much smaller than the other two. So, thin film is a solid or a liquid object with one of its dimensions very much smaller other than the two. So, thin films have thickness in the range of few angstroms to micrometers. So, thin films have Thickness in the range of few angstroms to micrometers, right? So the thin film is a solid or liquid object with one of its dimensions very much smaller than the other two. The other two, right? So the thin films have thickness in the range of few angstroms to micrometers. Few angstroms to micrometers, right? So the properties of thin films depends on the properties of thin films depends on. The method of uh, deposition, the method of deposition, what uh, the method of deposition, so substrate material, substrate material, and of course the substrate temperature, which is very very important for the uh, for the temper for the uh, for the uh, substrate, uh, the temperature, the substrate temperature, and other is the rate of deposition. Uh, there is a rate of deposition, and other is a background pressure. So rate of deposition depends upon the technique that we use. In case of sputtering, if you use if you use the as if, if you use sputtering as a character, if you use sputtering as a fabrication method for the character for the fabrication of the thin film, then it is a parameter called sputtering yield. It depends on the sputtering yield of that particular um, material, right? So that is what we call method of deposition, substrate material, substrate material, substrate temperature, rate of deposition, background pressure. Right? So these are the properties of thin films which are mainly strongly dependent on. That is what I am telling you again. It is method of deposition. Substrate material, substrate temperature, rate of deposition, background pressure. So these are the certain properties of thin films, right? So thin, thin, thin films. So the so school of this is this was not taken from school of nanotechnology, uh, process and applications of uh, applications to sensors and actuators, right? We have these single process steps. So we have certain basics, right? We have, we have some technical technology modules and applications of sensors and actuators. Applications of sensors and actuators, right? So we have some basics here. So we have certain uh, uh, fundamentals, right? So we have some three D printing and two photon polymerization towards the rapid, towards the rapid prototyping of micro to nano devices, 
right? Uh, another training session that is what building a silicon based activator, which will have some uh, uh, building building a uh, building um, uh, building a silicon based activator. So this building of uh, silicon activator on a uh, on a substrate material. So requires so that means the fabrication of thin film on a substrate requires a clean room. A clean room, right? So we know that there are different classes of clean room, right? So the clean room is a fundamental, uh, a fundamental uh, facility where we need to fabricate the thin film to our uh, required uh, our required uh, nanometers, right? So that is what the process micro nano devices for uh, biosensing how to develop a, a lab a lab on chip a lab on chip uh, and a biosensor and a biosensor and we use the photonics packaging laser hybrid integration towards space applications. Right, and we use high density double field TSVs and advanced advanced three D integrations. Right, so we use Prana for EMFTs. Right, so system has system levels like three D integration. Right, so these are some of the uh, some of the some of the films, uh, some of the uh, layers. What we can see, these are the single process steps, and these are the technology modules. So based on these modules, we need to go for the fabrication of the material and the applications of sensors and activators. Right, so applications of sensors and activators. Ion induced nano patterning of semiconductor surfaces, a short link between the basic research and applications, photonic devices, right, material sensors and activators in MEMS technology, and uh, UV sensor technology integrating an unmanned aerial vehicles, right. So, what are the fabrication techniques? So, the fabrication of nano structures uh, requires a lithography techniques. So, lithography techniques like electron beam lithography, beam lithography, and we have the ion beam lithography. Optical lithography, interference lithography, X ray lithography, and nano imprint. So, the nano structures can be obtained by using etching or lift of the electrode position. So, fab uh, fabrication of nano structures. Uh, nano structures are basically fabricated by using lithography technique, right? Lithography technique. Because in nowadays, uh, nowadays the, due to the miniature of the devices, miniature of the devices, people are fabricating the thin film, uh, thin film technology mostly based on the lithography technique. Right, so lithography technique. So in in that uh, lithographic technique, we have so many uh, types where it is called E beam lithography. E beam lithography is one of the characterization tool. Is one of the fabrication tool for the uh, uh, fabrication of nanostructure. That means lithography writes on the sample. Lithography writes on the sample. Writes on the uh, given sample. Right by using some electron beam. Right, and we have the ion beam lithography also, and optical lithography like photolithography also. We have the interference lithography, we have interference lithography, and also we have the X-ray lithography, and that is a nano imprint. So the nano structures can be obtained by using edge or lift of electrode positions. So these are the, some of the fabrication of nano structures. So where the microelectronic devices, sensors, and actuators, where they are, where they are. So this is what the MEMS device. This is what the MEMS micro meter, micro mirrors we have. We have, and we have certain filters here. So that is uh, BAW filters, BA duplexers, RF switch, radio frequency switch that can be done by using variable capacitors, and we have some oscillators. And here in this particular uh, chip design, we have the accelerometer, gyroscope, electronic compass, and uh, pressure sensor. So sensor devices. So these are the smartphone internals. So, so if you see the smartphone internals, we have system on chip that is the SOC. We have the ARM core. So Cortex E8 interrupt controller timers we have. So LCD controllers, USB controllers, and memory controllers, right? So these are the certain um, uh, devices, uh, uh, microelectronic devices, sensors, and activators. So where they are basically, uh, it's basically leading. So that is what the SD RAM. So these are the devices, right? So this particular chip, this particular chip internally we have this. Externally, these are the factors that are incorporated, right? These are the factors that are uh, being incorporated. So we have some pattern current criteria, ALS proximity sensors, and micro displays. So we have antennas, battery, right, and accelerometers, at compass, camera, LCD touchscreen. So these are the normal microphone. There is normal normal uh, smartphone features of a chip. So these are microelectronic devices, sensors, and activators where they are. So this is what uh, uh, the solar panels, solar panel, thin film solar panels, right? Solar panels, solar cells. Solar panels are made of thin films. So, so PV solar, photovoltaic solar panel, and the concentration design and lenses on photovoltaic silicon microcells. So this is what the chip designing is. This is what the chip designing is. Single uh, photovoltaic silicon micro mo, microcell mounted on a test board. So this is what the test board mounted on a test board. 
and we have this particular uh, PCB design of that particular uh, chip and we have silicon wafer this is one the silicon wafer with hundreds of cells so these hundreds of cells so where we can see uh, that particular uh, that particular fabrication of the thin film fabrication of the thin film so to write this particular cells to write on a thin film to write the, of course if you take uh, this as one silicon chip so to write a pattern on the silicon chip to write a particular pattern to write a particular pattern on the silicon chip people need to go for people need to go for this type of lithographic techniques that is what e-beam lithography i-beam lithography optical lithography and photolithography so we have interference uh, lithography and x-ray lithography and nano imprint technology so people use this type of technology to write on the particular silicon uh, wafer so that we can get the miniature of the devices so that we can get the miniature of the devices that's what we, we use for uh, pv photovoltaic solar panels with the concentration design this is lenses on pv silicon microcells and single pv single photovoltaic silicon microcell mounted on test board so this mounted test board is given uh, from here we have this one fabrication and from here we have this particular thing and from here and silicon wafer with hundreds of cells so this is what the cycle process we use uh, for microelectronic devices in case of sensors and activators they are there so this particular fabrication fabrication of this particular structures fabrication of this particular design fabrication of this particular uh, designing on a silicon chip silicon chip by using this uh, by using this type of fabrication technique as we told one needs a clean room one needs a clean room so this is what we have done at uh, uh, some uh, this is what some of the uh, labs we have done so in in, in the present scenarios the clean room facilities are available at uh, iit bombay and uh, we have at a uh, center for nano science and engineering at in, in at indian institute of sciences bangalore right so where we can fabricate so where we can fabricate that particular uh, we can fabricate the thin film on a silicon wafer that means the etching can be done and we need some mask also mask can also be incorporated on the particular chip to write that particular pattern also so people use uh, this type of lithography so these are where uh, people use so people uh, need to people need to have some uh, 10 class clean room or 1000 uh, class clean room to fabricate this particular type of uh, nano structures nano structure that is what thin film nano structures right so nobody is uh, fabrication these are all the nobody is people use different types of fabrication techniques like pvd as it has you are seen in the physical way for deposition like sputtering and all so sputtering rf spa radio frequency sputtering pulse laser deposition so these are all the different types of sputtering techniques these are all the different types of fabrication techniques but as the technology improved as the technology goes on increasing people go for uh, lithographic techniques so lithography as we told lithography is one of the pattern writing on silicon wafer so there are different types of patternings where we can see uh, there are different types of patternings we have seen in ev lithography nano print and right so when we fabricate this type of uh, to fabricate this particular uh, to fabricate this type of design one need to go for uh, this uh, one need to go for uh, clean rooms right so where we can uh, fabricate that particular uh, material so for uh, for even to write on a silicon wafer it requires a lot of time to write a pattern to write one pattern on different geometries if you want to pattern if you want to patternize different geometry on a silicon wafer people need to go for a lot of time right so clean rooms uh, have that uh, what you call laminar flow of clean clean air constantly flowing from the ceiling vertically downwards with perforated raised flooring right so air is controlled in temperature and humidity filters to clean air from dust and other particle inside pressure less uh, higher than external inside pressure uh, higher than external so these are the clean rooms that you have uh, that you will call laminar flow of clean air constantly flowing from the ceiling vertically downwards with perforated raised floor right so silicon sensors and activators how they are built so this is what the resonant pressure sensor this is what the resonant pressure sensor where we have taken from one of the journal uh, from uh, one of the uh, publications right so for, for publications in sensors and activators in 2013 right so this is what you can refer this is one the duty of that so this is one the resonant pressure sensor we have some uh, electrodes we have electrode sensor electrode tri electrode oscillator oscillators and these are the different tools these are the different techniques where the patterning can be done. 
patterning can be done on a silicon chip or any not only silicon chip it can be fabrication can be done on a substrate whether it is a silicon substrate or a glass substrate or any aluminum substrate whatever means so this is how the uh, fab uh, fabrication takes place so this is what uh, first uh, people go for uh, different types of uh, uh, people take so suppose if you take thin film so if you take one thin film like this so we can fabricate one layer on this right one layer can be fabricated other layer can be fabricated so so there are so many multi layers multi layers can be fabricated can be fabricated so to write on that particular film to write on that particular um, silicon or substrate people need to go for different lithography techniques so this is what they, uh, they uh, this is what they have done right so how the fabrication process takes place sequence of uh, addition and subtraction of thin layers of materials that is are multi layers according to prices and uh, complex right pattern uh, pattern transferred from mask or uh, directly designed on the surface of paper each device structure a pattern film on a new material layer so this is what the oxidization depo uh, deposition the lithography and the dopants and then etching so this process is continuous cyclic process oxidization deposition lithography doping and etching right so for this we need to go for some mask like layers right we need certain mask also that means if a mask is made like this if you want to fabricate a thin film of this particular structure right so this particular mask has to be first fabricated first made and placed on a silicon wafer and then write it on that the mask will be etched on the uh, based upon the time based on the uh, importance of mask layer it will be etched on the surface right so this is what the basic significance of fabrication process so here we see the thermal process uh, thermal process deposition doping and etch and wet to dry etch and wet to dry and the dopants and this is thin film deposition that is by uh, pcvd so so thin film deposition right thin film deposition like uh, pv pcvd so these are the doping uh, these are doping materials takes place and this is where uh, the etch and wet to dry takes place right so this is all the thin film deposition techniques so this is not the deposition technique this is what uh, the sputtering no it's not sputtering it is chemical vapor deposition right so these are the certain the uh, two certain uh, machines where these are the certain machines where people uh, fabricate the thin film nanostructure so to obtain the miniature of the device we, we need to go for this type of fabrication technique so technology has been improved to some very great extent so that the miniature of the devices can be done right so we need, uh, we need so to place the systems we need some clean room equipment also this is what the clean room equipment front and back and the process modules so process modules we have surface and bulk micro machine so material deposition stress reduction and bulk etching uh, sacrifice layer etching right and when we see the 3d integration we go for thinning of wafers that is cmp and grinding bonding temporary or not tsvs and isolation or conductive filling of TSC. So this is what uh, the substrate and the layers have been fabricated, right? So we, uh, the images were taken uh, from a journal uh, from Quantum Interference Center, so which was published in the year uh, 2017 by Mid Lincoln Laboratory, right? So this is what uh, people are taking from USA, right? So this is what the qubits. Uh, so qubits, which is a fundamental for quantum computing, 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 computation technology, can be done. So this is all the uh, Magnetization, uh, magnetization of qubit of the tensor. How the entanglement of the state takes place. Right? So these are qubit chips. So technology platform, common process flow, uh, customized single steps. So uh, we can develop uh, fabrication. Uh, develop a versatile <coughs> silicon or uh, SVAD technology platform that could evolve different uh, uh, specific technologies to cover these specific requirements. Right? So when you go for near ultra or high light detection. The PDE should be greater than uh, 60% at 420 nanometers, whereas the visible light uh, uh, detection, uh, the PDE should be greater than 50% uh, 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 at 550 nanometers. And in case of vacuum ultraviolet light detection, the PDE should be greater than 25% at 175 nanometers, whereas in near infrared, the detection PDE detection should be around 20%, that is around 850 nanometers. So for cryogenic applications, we need to go for near uh, near uh, we go for near infrared. Depth or uh, near ultraviolet uh, uh, radiation for uh, cryogenic applications. For UHD and SIP and silicon uh, probes, so we have ultra high density, high dynamic range applications. So, so these are the, some of the technology film 
common process law where customers can be stateless. So in case of silicon photomultiplier, SAPM, we have biomedical inst instrumentation, we have biomedical instrumentation, we have quantum technology and quantum computing, and we have industrial instrumentation. So we have higher energy physics and automation and space and astrophysics. So these are all fabricated on silicon photomultipliers, that is what SIPM. So this is what SIPM. So near ultraviolet uh, light detection uh, SIPM, silicon uh, uh, silicon photomultiplier. So we have this type of technology. These are the, some of the applications, right? So basically, thin films and nanotechnology has uh, a lot to do, uh, has a lot to do in the uh, has, uh, thin films along with uh, fabrication and nanotechnology has a lot to do in the uh, science and the, the development of future science, right? So what is nanotechnology? We all know that nanotechnology is a, a nanometer is a billionth of meter. That's really uh, nanoscales focus on the things that are measured in nanometers, including atoms and molecules, the basic buildings of our world. So this is not the source of ball. These are fundamental we have seen in our previous lectures. So we have source of ball, which is 70 centimeters, get to 13 centimeter, and we have 300 micrometers and human hair, which is 75 micrometers and DNA which is around 2.5 nanometers, right? So white light is made up of all wavelengths of colors of light. When white light heats the thin film, some of the light is reflected from the front side of the film and some travels through it and is reflected from the back surface. If the rays reflected from the front and back have crushed that overlap, they reinforce, they reinforce each other and the reflector color is bright. This is called constructive interference. That is what we need, the superposition of two light waves, right? So the waves cancel each other and the reflector color is dim, that is called the destructive interference. The thickness of the film determines which colors will be bright and which will be cancelled out. In very thin films, as in 400 nanometers, they, all the colors cancel out. So this is what the constructive interference and this is what the destructive interference. White light is made up of all wavelengths or colors or when white light hits the thin film, some of the light is reflected from the front surface of the film. And some travels through it and is reflected on the base of back surface. The thickness of the film determines which colors will be bright and which will be cancelled out. In a very thin film, less than uh, less than 400 nanometers thick, all the colors cancel out and the appears in the film appears black. So this is some of the physics behind the formation of the thin films, and this is what the interference is. We have the constructive interference and destructive interference, and this is how the thin films in action. When the thin films are fabricated, they are used for solar cells, solar pollution. So most people say, why, what colors are these? Most people say blue, blue, but most people are wrong. The feathers of these birds are covered in thin films, right? So what are these colors? Colors, people will say that it is blue, but uh, uh, most people, uh, the blue color is not accurate. The feathers on these birds are covered in thin films that reflect black light to make them look blue. But in reality, they are completely colorless. So due to thin film only, that particular, uh, mm, Due to thin films only, that particular color appears to be blue, but actually it is not blue. So the experiments, uh, so what we tell our students is write your name on the strip of a black back, black paper, use a brush to dip one drop of nail polish onto the surface of the water. The polish uh, will spread out on a thin film. Side the paper into the pan, make sure it is completely under water. Hold on one end of the paper, if you hold on one end of the paper, does the nail polish to clear? So that is what we can see the thin film. So this is what black paper is used for this activity because it absorbs all visible light. The colors that appear are created by the interaction of light with the thin film. The nail polish spread it out in super thin film which creates iridescent uh, rainbow colors of the paper. The thin film is only a few hundred nanometers thick about as a, sum, as a soap bubble. The film is slightly thicker in some places and thinner in other. As the thickness of the film change, the color changes. So finally, we can conclude the fabrication of thin films using uh, material, the fabrication of thin films using material technology, to use thermal evaporation, EV evaporation and sputtering, and fabrication of nanostructures using uh, lithography, etching and lift off passes. Nowadays, uh, commercial uh, available nanostructures are also being used to go for the miniature of the devices. The variation of magnetic properties with the thickness and comparison with the magnetic nanostructures. Exchange coupling variation in pseudo spin wall magnetic nanostructures with copper stick layer thickness. Right, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.